It's 21st July and moon is located there in the western skies with a crescent face. But today it's a special day because today moon is not the only celestial object to have a crescent face. Earth's twin planet or sister planet of Earth Venus is also located in the western skies near the moon as an evening star. And in today's video we are going to capture both of them through my telescope. Currently Venus is the third brightest object in the sky after sun and moon. Over the years the Venus's mesmerizing beacon of light has been mistaken for everything from a UFO to even angels. Venus is so bright that it naturally catches everybody's attention and make us curious to aim our telescope towards its bright light. It can reach a magnitude of up to minus 4.7 that is 17 times brighter than the brightest star Sirius. Venus also goes through phases just like our own moon as it orbits around the sun. Its phases are easily visible through a telescope with moderate magnification as it waxes or wanes. An interesting note is that Venus is actually brighter and larger during its crescent phases compared to near full phase during its closer position to Earth. Other than viewing phases, Venus does not have much surface details to reveal as its surface is permanently covered by thick clouds of sulfur dioxide. And unlike Jupiter and Saturn, Venus does not have any large storms or cloud bands in its atmosphere. So any detail in its atmosphere is very subtle. So right now, Venus is in its crescent phase and this is the best time to capture this planet. So let's go and begin our capturing. So as you can see here that's crescent moon through my eyepiece. We are using currently a 20 mm eyepiece and at a 50x magnification. The viewing conditions are average. And now let's turn our telescope to the crescent face of planet Venus. To capture planet Venus we'll use a 10 mm eyepiece at a 100x magnification. We'll also use the digital zoom of a mobile camera. And I will be using my Redmi Note 8 Pro to capture planet Venus. and moon also so here you can see the live view of planet venus through my mobile camera that is attached to my 10 mm eyepiece you can pause the video and have a look at the camera settings now we have completed the first phase of our journey capturing now let's move on to processing So this is our raw video for planet Venus and as you can see that we can easily see the crescent phase of planet Venus here. So now let's see the raw video for moon. We can see some surface details like I think this is the Theophilus crater here and this is the crescent phase. So now let's first process the moon video because we I have already processed I have already shown you how to process planetary images. So in this video I'll show you how to process the videos for moon. So first we'll open pip So first, we'll just drag and drop our source file here. So this is our source file. This is the output frame. We'll close this, and now we'll optimize app options for solar lunar closer here. And now we'll select batch mode, and now we'll test options. So as you can see here, it is telling us to select the area which we need to process. So I think I'll. zoom out a little bit and select the area which we need to process so this is the area which we need to process we'll select that and close the output frame here we leave the input options to default we'll go to processing options and here we'll select monochrome conversion we'll select in this because as you know we are not making a mineral moon here we just need the gray color of the moon which is the natural color of the moon which we see So we don't need the brown colors or RGB here. We'll enable area of interest. 
we'll zoom in a little bit so here we are using surface feature we are using frame stabilization mode for surface features because we need enable area of interest so we'll zoom in a little bit I think 100 is what we'll do 50 and we'll select the area of interest we'll reduce the size here so this is okay and we'll shrink this one and anchor it to the most prominent crater here so this seems fine we we'll close this quality options we we'll leave them to default now we'll go to output options output format we need avi and now do processing so we'll start processing processing is complete and this is our output from pip so let's see what we have got here okay so this is it i think we have got quite a lot of surface features on the moon here you know we were at a lower magnification we were at only 50x magnification so these my surface details are okay i think so pip has done its job now we'll open auto stacker here so we'll drop our pip file here in auto stacker and now we'll uh, image stabilization mode we'll select surface here and now it has given image stabilization anchor we'll have to put this anchor point this x mark here to a prominent surface feature like it can be a uh, it can be cloud band or a crater like here on moon we just click control and left click to set an anchor point here at the theophilus crater here so then we'll improve tracking and rgb align feature is not shown because of course we selected monochrome in pip so now we'll click analyze it is analyzing all our frames so now auto stacker has analyzed our video so now we need to place some alignment points here on our video so we'll select ap size to 48 and place our alignment points at all the important data points in the video so like we can place it here on this crater this crater here you need to place uh, these alignment points at all the major features like this is some kind of lava basin here so now for the smaller surface features we'll change the ap size to 24 for smaller features so i think 35 alignment points are more than enough placing alignment points is done now we click on stack so let's see what the what is the result this was the output from pip and auto stack of 50% let's see what we got now we'll sharpen this image a little bit with registack 6 so as you can see here we have opened registack 6 so first we'll open our auto stacker image i'll choose the auto stacker 80% and drag and drop it here we'll stretch intensities now i'll select wavelet filter for default and now it's a long process of layers so in regi stacks we have to we have these wavelets here on our left we have these wavelets so what we need to do we need to uh, increase we need to take these layers on the right side to increase the sharpness of our image so here we have six wavelet filters here so we don't have to take them to extreme positions like here or our image will become like this we just need to increase them a little bit like it was by default at one i'll just do it at two so as you can see that our image has improved a little bit i think on no i don't know so here we can here at functions we have histogram so now let's see the results that we have got so first see the results for moon so this was our pip video that we created pip has stabilized the moon here and from this video we managed to get this as you can see here we have 
improved uh, quite a little bit we can see quite a little bit surface details here and this is another version of the same photo and this one and this is extra sharp I don't like this my favorite one is this one here you can also see the darker region of the moon here this part so now let's move on to the final images of planet Venus so this was our video that we created using pip as you can see we can clearly see the crescent phase of planet Venus and as planet Venus was very low at horizon we get all this atmospheric disturbance here so I chose the 30% auto stacker image so auto stacker stack that to this so this was our final image Let's zoom it a little bit so we can clearly see the phase of planet Venus here wow I mean amazing another one So the question is, why Venus shows crescent phases just like our moon? First, let's start with what we already know, the moon. As the moon travels through its monthly orbit around the earth, we see different percentages of its surface illuminated by the sun. To be sure, half of the moon is always illuminated, but our perspective related to that half changes over time, and moon always faces its same side toward earth because it's tidally locked. When the moon is full, we are seeing the lit 50% straight on. When it's crescent, it's mostly the other side of the moon that is sunlit. With Venus, there are a couple of twists. Venus orbit the sun in a smaller orbit than Earth. Due to its smaller orbit of only 225 days, it speeds around sun more quickly than Earth. This means Venus is sometimes relatively closer to Earth and other times it's on the other side of sun. It's this change in relative position that causes the phases of planet Venus. When Venus is on the other side of the Sun, from Earth it's been lit straight on from our perspective, which is equivalent to the full moon. This event when Venus is on the other side of Sun is called superior conjunction. But Venus is also at its farthest distance from Earth at this time. So in a telescope eyepiece, Venus appears as a fully illuminated but comparatively tiny disk. However, we can't actually see Venus in full disk from Earth because it's on the other side of Sun and completely hidden in its glare. As it comes closer to us, the apparent size increases and the phase changes. By the time Venus appears half lit, which is equivalent to the first quarter or third quarter moon, it has grown considerably in telescope eyepiece. Of course, the most exciting phase to watch is the crescent phase when Venus and Earth are going to make their closest approach to each other at an inferior conjunction. Venus will approach an inferior conjunction on 13th August. After that, it will start appearing in the morning pre-dawn sky. For a few weeks before and after an inferior conjunction, Venus is in a crescent phase and appears much larger than its gibbous phase. When Venus is in its crescent phase, it is at its brightest in a night sky, maxing out at around minus 4.7. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you.